take the shot. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Woods for three. Yes! Oh, smoke. That was from there. And now we await the 44th renewal with new memories in the offing. As the list Alex Glover visit the Villanova Wildcats next. Prism Sports proudly presents. Philadelphia Big Five City Series Basketball. From a sold out DuPont Pavilion, it's the Villanova Wildcats and the LaSalle Explorers. And welcome to one of the most spirited rivalries in college basketball, Villanova and LaSalle, live from DuPont Pavilion. Hi everybody, I'm Larry Rosen with Ed Stefanski. Welcome to what we hope will be a great one. Game two of our triple header here on Prism tonight, LaSalle and Villanova. LaSalle featuring Doug Overton, the All-American point guard, whose scoring is going up, buddy. Well, you had to think who was going to take over for Lionel Simmons to his graduation, and Doug Overton has done it. Scoring at will at some times. Scoring from the outside of long jumpers, but now with Randy Woods back in the lineup, maybe he'll slow down there and go to the assist mode. Yeah, they've got that three-guard setback with Jack Hurd and Randy Woods. That's where most of the offense comes from. Yeah, and Randy Woods, a terrific defensive player, also will be all over Chris Walker this afternoon. Jackie Hurd has to hit the three-point shot to be effective to bring Villanova out of that zone or to sag in on the defense. So Hurd is a key this afternoon's ball game. Meantime, for Roley Massimino's club, it seems like one Mr. Miller keeps stepping his game up. Every time we see him, Lance looks a little bit better. Well, Lance Miller, as we said earlier, has to shoot the basketball well. He's been doing that. He practiced all summer. They said the next shot to the NBA, you have to shoot the ball well. Well, he's done it, and he gives the scoring to Villanova and Roley Massimino. Both clubs will look for inside offense where they can find it. I'm curious to see how Calvin Bird and Aaron Bain play in the four spot do today. Well, both excellent athletes. Aaron Bain is technically very solid. He's a guy that couldn't get the ball inside. Well, Bird will use his athletic ability. Now, remember, LaSalle's not real big and physical inside, so Bain and Bird can roam inside against the Explorers. And one other note, Roley Massimino is 0-3 against Speedy Morris in his own building. You know, Roley's going to want to get a W. We'll come back with starting lineups in just a moment. Moment. Basketball camps, I really love to go and see because those kids are there for one reason, and that's to learn this game. And, and I want to try to do as much as I can to help them along that path and try to give them some of the things that I've picked up and hopefully help their career. It really is enjoyable to get out there to, to see the joy in the kids' lives when you come out and just to be able to help them out. And, even if it's just one ball player who you can touch or you can make better, then, you know, you've done a good job. Barkley, Hawkins, and the Sixers show you their stuff at the Sixers overnight and day camps. Well, with electricity in the air, we're live at DuPont Pavilion. Let's go to Al Alaya for today's starting lineups. Philadelphia Big Five presents today's City Series game between the LaSalle University Explorers and the Villanova University Wildcats. Starting at forward for LaSalle, a 6'6 senior from Fort Worth, Texas, number 20, Broderick, president. For Villanova, a 6'6 sophomore from Bridgewater, New Jersey, number 14, Lance Miller. For LaSalle, a 6'6 junior from Lidditz, Pennsylvania, number 25, Jack Hurd. For Villanova, a 6'7 sophomore from Clifton, Virginia, number 44, Aaron Bain. At center, for LaSalle, a 6'9 junior from the Amsterdam, the Netherlands, number 44, Milko Leverst. For Villanova, a 6'9 junior from Howell, New Jersey, number 32, Mark Dowdell. At guard for LaSalle, a 6'3 senior from Philadelphia, number 11, Doug Overton. For Villanova, a 6'1 junior from Bridgewater, New Jersey, number 12, David Miller. For LaSalle, a 
six foot junior from Philadelphia, number 14, Randy Woods. And for Villanova, a six six junior from Rochester, New York, number 24, Frank Water. There's LaSalle head coach, Speedy Morris, the head coach at LaSalle. Of course, Roly Massimino, the head coach at Villanova University. This will be the sixth time that these teams have met under these two coaches. Speedy holds a 4-1 advantage. And again, it's Stefanski. I think their perimeter offense may be the key to this one. Both clubs are going to be, as Roly's been calling it, chucking and ducking. Well, if you like offense, this should be the game, and you'll see three-point shooters, and, but you'll see them from range. LaSalle, you must pick them up as soon as they get past half court because Dougie Overton, Woods, and Jack Hurd will fire from downtown. Villanova's aware of that, so look for Villanova's defense to be well outside on the perimeter. A couple of very well-dressed coaches today. Of course, Rowley known for his... Uh... He's got his game face on yeah, there right now, too. Sure does. As we look at Doug Overton, number 11, there are your starting lineups. Aaron Bain with just his fourth start of the year, and David Miller getting another start. In place of Chris Walker, and we're underway. First ball comes right to Eddie's feet. It's out of bounds off Stefanski. Now we're going to do it again. And Rowley's already up and active. Levers to Dell. In the hands of Jack Hurd to Randy Woods and Doug Overton. Man to man defense out of Villanova. Glad you're with us for the second of our Prism Basketball triple header. LaSalle and Villanova backdoor cut. Woods in the air and no good. President's got it up and down. Well, Roderick Pre President, the transfer for Harden Simmons right there. Real nice movement by LaSalle. And as you see, Randy Woods will be all over David Miller. David to his brother Lance. Out high, Dell Dell. Bain flashes to the low post, has it, spins, drop step in the air, no good. Lance Miller, strong, followed, no. And it's off the hands of Doug Overton. Well, we talk about it in the pregame about rebounding the basketball, not the strong players for LaSalle inside. Right there, Villanova really controlled the offensive glass as Bain misses, but you'll see Lance Miller right there, goes back up, he misses it, but he stays right with it and is out on Overton. Set out of bounds, finds Daldell at the foul line, rolls down the lane, and he is in and out. So both clubs have gotten what they wanted, first trip. Overton loses it off his hands, turnover Doug Overton. As you can see, both teams love to go up and down the floor. Both teams will press each other, so we should have a game somewhere in the 80s this afternoon. David Miller and Randy Woods all over of Randy. The Philadelphia product, known as an intimidating defender on the perimeter. Lance Miller with Overton. That's a tough matchup for Dougie. Off the ball, foul on Aaron Bain setting the screen. And, buddy, these two teams are talking to each other already. No yeah, surprise. There's no surprise at all. We've talked about the Big Five contest, inner city games in Philadelphia, and they're both going after each other. Both teams play extremely aggressive on the defensive end. 2-2-1, two, two, three-quarter court trap out of Villanova. Over to good cut, finds Devers. Another missed layup, so we've missed four layups in the first uh, 90 seconds. Well, right there, Milko Levers has improved dramatically, a junior now. He's got to use the glass real hard and go up and use that glass. That's his ally. Over to for three. Way off target. Dowdell wants to look for an outlet. Had Miller ahead of the pack, chose not to use him. He'll go it alone. Pulls up to Woodard. Baseline. Hesitation. Short. And Milko's got another board. Here's Dougie. Randy Woods, his first appearance in America. An NBA level three is way short. And Bain's got it alone. Randy, of course, sat out the first six due to a preseason fighting incident. Bain, banged by President. Larry, what you have to watch, especially with three-point shooters on both teams, the ball will be rebounded long if there is a miss normally on a shot from that distance. Villanova in the last possession did an excellent job blocking every man out for LaSalle and made an area to rebound the basketball. Miller, again, a tough matchup for Doug Overton. He'll give him the three. See, that's a 
mistake. I think so. Overton has to be up on Lance Miller. He's proven he can shoot the basketball. You got to play him. He's respecting the drive, but he's got to play the jump shot. Great D, David Miller and Woodard to Woodard on a two on one. And defense creates offense. The real nice trap there by David Miller and Woodard, and they work well to get the two points. Someone's got to show themselves in the middle of the floor to Doug Overton. He breaks it on the dribble, has Randy Woods. Another NBA three. <laughs> one, thing, shy. one thing about Randy Woods, he's not shy at all. He will shoot the basketball. Once he's on the court, he thinks nothing but defense and offense. The man doesn't think about anything else. We're 5-5. Five, five. Low post Bain spins for the fadeaway. Clean shot out of Aaron Bain. The McDonald's All-American from Flint Hill Prep. Heard. Has Levers to load. Blocked by Bain. Again, it's Levers. No, foul called. I believe on David Miller. As Milko's had his share of play. Like what's happening here? Milko Levers has got to score the basketball here. Inside, he's 6'11. Bain comes from behind, gets the nice block. You see the foul by Miller on the ground. But he has to take it. That was not a strong foul by Aaron Bain. He's got to go up and dunk the ball. And Woodard goes to the bench to be replaced by Calvin Bird. And David Miller on the bench replaced by Chris Walker. Over to low post levers. Yeah, he's missing layups, but he makes his little drop step from the baseline. That's a big shot. Foul Randy Woods on the inbound. I think Randy Woods is a little too pumped up for this basketball game right now. He's really into it. He wants to play extremely hard, but the referees are going to call fouls right in the middle of the floor if he keeps bumping. Now Chris Walker is the guy that Randy Woods will have to cover. Walker a bit more experienced than Miller, usually the starter, but David got the first three and a half minutes. Bain off the screen. Miller may have walked, goes to the corner to Chris Walker. Floor board belongs to Jack Hurd. for an NBA three. And a push off on Mark Dowdell. Well, there's, we just talked about the long rebounds you'll get on three-point shots. And Dowdell caught himself out of position and he had a push on Milko Levers. We got bombs away here, Coach. Oh, that's definitely what it's going to be. <laughs> See, Villanova has to recognize that they're going to shoot as soon as they get past there. They're going to fire it down. And they got great shooters in Hurd, Woods, and Overton. Hurd from Levers blocked by Bird. Walker head up left hand to Lance. Bain wide open. Off the heel, another long rebound. Three on one the other way. Woods has over it, but he trips over Broderick President. And poor Doug Overton went over the ankle of his teammate for a turnover. So we've got our first break of the basketball game. It's 7-7, live from Villanova. Comedy, drama, action. The movies you want to see are on Prism. Every month you'll see movies like Steel Magnolias with Julia Roberts, Sally Field, Shirley MacLaine, and Olympia Dukakis. Django and Cash with Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell. The Big Picture with Kevin Bacon and Martin Short. And Next of Kin with ghost star Patrick Swayze. It's a movie lineup for movie lovers each and every month on Prism. It's the only channel you need for the best variety of movies on cable TV. LA Gear presents the Cannibal to Victory Sweepstakes, premiering January 1991. Visit a participating LA Gear retailer, try on a great pair of LA Gear sneakers, and enter the sweepstakes to win a trip for two to a pro basketball playoff game. You may even win a free pair of LA Gear sneakers. And watch the announcement of today's LA Gear Unstoppable Player of the Game. The staff and management of prison send you our best this holiday season and throughout the coming year. of us at Prism would like to pass along our condolences to Doug Overton and his family. They lost Doug's grandma, Bessie. There's Doug last night. Bessie Overton died last night a couple of days before Christmas. And, well, she did a great job in helping raise that young man, Doug Overton. And Dougie asked us to please pass along uh, wishes to the entire family this Christmas season. So a sad note on this one for the All-American Doug Overton. 
and typical Big Five game, the two teams shooting three of nine and three of ten respectively. Most of them from long either long distance or layups, really. Yeah, well, both teams playing aggressive man to man. You have just terrific matchups out there because remember, a bird and Lance Miller can cover almost anyone on the court. Woodard's doing a good job. So the matchups are key because both teams are trying to break down each other man to man. And Villanova yet to go to a true center in uh, James Bryson, I guess, for the matchup. Bird's posted, doubled down by Hurd nicely, has to throw it back to Walker near half court. Great job doubling down. Excellent team defense right there. Three players involved for the South. So it's a 1-3-1 one, one offensive set. Woodard will come off a couple of screens. There he is, has it, and Hurd's on his arm. That'll be three free throws for Greg Woodard off Jack Hurd. See, Jack Hurd had excellent defensive position. He came off the screen. Watch as Hurd avoids the screen right, right there. He's there. You don't want to foul, and he caught him right on the wrist. He didn't have to foul him. And you're so aware of Woodard's shooting ability if you're a Jack Hurd that you just don't want to give him anything. But as good of a distance shooter as he's even a better free throw shooter, he's got three of them here. And that's like giving him three points in most of the time. Again, Rowling not able to go as yet with any of his real big guys with Bryson or Pell. And he really doesn't have to in the lineup that Vassal has in there with Milko Levers inside. Villanova definitely can go with this lineup. Bain was in there, and Dowdell is placed for the center. Very agile person, and I think you'll see a lot of Dowdell in there at center. And again, the new rule this year, a foul on a three-pointer is three free throws, and Greg Woodard commonly drills the ball. And here's the trap. Wood, left-hand long pass, heard! I'll tell you, the kid is so strong, and I mean Randy Woods, to throw that pass just over the Villanova players with being defended. He's a strong man. A 50-footer on the mark with the left hand. So one-point Villanova lead, posting up Dowdell. Faces, banks it down. Milko Levers lays down for the charge, but that's not forthcoming. I've always liked the way Mark Dowdell plays. Now a junior, he's just so fundamentally sound. Jack Hurd won't wait. Calvin Bird. High in the air to the board. Lance Miller at Dowdell uses Walker instead. Trowling. Wholesale substitutions for LaSalle. Jeff Neubauer, Bron Holland, and Donnie Shelton all come in at the same time. Meanwhile, Walker and Lance Miller will sit down. Mumford and Bain return. So this is our first look at Mumford. Six-footer out of Mattapod, Massachusetts from Lexington High. Very quick player. Over to Newbauer. And pass. Jeff Newbauer only has one turnover in the year, but there he waited too long to make the pass. Bain stripped by Bron Holland. Good hands, Bron Holland. And Speedy says one of the, uh, as Overton will go down the lane, drop it off to Shelton for the layup. One of the advantages of, of uh, Randy Wood sitting out was all the minutes they got for Jeff Neubauer, and maybe he's found himself an extra player for the rotation. He could really use Jeff Neubauer to, to give him a little spill. Dowdell, strong dish for Bird. Again, Mark Dowdell makes it happen with a great drive to penetration. Calvin Bird gets the two. Doug's in trouble. Timeout. Timeout. Doug Overton's looking up to Jeff Neubauer and saying, you got to come back to the basketball. They'll have to take a timeout here. So we'll look back at 10 years ago, the matchup between LaSalle and Villanova. Kind of a nice, quiet, calm game. Only went to triple overtime. Let's all look back together. It was a different, a simpler time filled with streamers and a palestra packed to the rafters. LaSalle meeting a Villanova team with future Hall of Famers Alex Bradley and John Pannone. Yet the Cats could not shake the Explorers. It would finally move to a third overtime. Kevin Butch Lynham cast in the hero's role. Lynham trying to get comfortable. Here's the shot. It is good. Oh, brother. Now what can Villanova do? No timeouts. Sinkowitz, he tries, he can't get it. It's a LaSalle win. The Explorers have upset the Wildcats. 
84-83 in triple overtime. Well, that's Stefanski. Here's your five man acting like a point guard. Well, the junior from Howe, New Jersey, Mark Dowdell. He's 6'9. The great penetration. Look how he avoids the offensive foul. Ron Holland tried to grab an offensive foul. Dowdell, athletic enough to get his 6'9 frame away from Ron Holland. This kid, Dowdell, just gives you everything. He's out there, plays extremely hard, will do what Raleigh Massimino wants offense, defense, rebound the basketball. You got to like the way the kid plays basketball. And he's really the only substantive bowl that Rolly can put on the floor, so he's got to play big boy minutes, especially when they get to the conference. And they're going to need some scoring from him inside, but Mark Dowdell is an all-around player, and they put some bulk in for him right now as Anthony Pell, the freshman, has checked in for Mark Dowdell. Seven-footer, 240 from the Bronx, Adlai Stevenson High School, number 52. There he is on the low post with Ron Holland. That's the matchup. Cross to Overton. Ball fake for Woods. Down the lane, Woods is blocked by Pell, and it's up Newbauer and around. And Speedy's not giving the ball back right away. Well, right there, Woods should have taken the jump shot. He had the jump shot and instead, instead tried to drive in there with the big guys and got it blocked. Speedy's upset with him because he had the jumper. And that's out of bounds off the hands of Sheldon. It really looked like it was off Pell, but Overton will not be able to buy the call. Wouldn't it be nice to have a coach like Speedy Morris who, when you're open, shoot that basketball? They shoot it from distance. All right, here comes Miller back in for Bird. That's Lance Miller. So he'll play the, the small forward, if you will, out of this set. He can play just about anywhere on the floor. Woodard's been quiet. Hand check foul, Jeff Neubauer. And that is four on LaSalle. Jeff Neubauer has a tough assignment here in cutting Greg Woodard. He's, he knows he can shoot the basketball, so he rushed at Woodard. Woodard did a nice job putting the ball on the floor. Head and shoulder by Lance. Oh, well, didn't he touch that basketball? And he wanted it. I think Anthony Pell might have got away with one there. And they'll just give the bucket to Miller. Double team Overton. Shelton comes to the middle of the floor to help him out. Villanova's biggest leads five. As Milko Levers goes back to the scorer's table. Randy Woods, tough screen. They jump switch on him. Mumford hand checks Woods. That'll be a foul on Lloyd. It was good defense for a while there by Mumford, but Randy Woods just showed the good ball handling and quickness. A little crossover dribble, and Mumford couldn't stay with him. Heard and Levers return. Let's, let's see if this is goaltending there. Let's see Anthony Pell, 52. Whoa. Goaltending, coach. It looked like it with the right hand. Goaltending. Hurd's got Milko posted. He has a size advantage on Bain, but he walks. But what's happening, Aaron Payne for Villanova is doing a good job pushing Milko Levers from the basket. When he's about 14, 12 feet away from the basket, he will not be a factor. They spread the floor for a Lance Miller one-on-one -on -one to Bain six feet away. Miller. Lance Miller has seven points, but Doug Overton is not playing good defense on him. He let him penetrate right in there, and then he didn't block him out. The missed shot by Bain. Lance Miller's there for two. And really goes to a 1-4 set to isolate Miller and Overton. That is, Doug's going to need some help with Lance Miller. Low post, bad pass, Levers, knocked out of bounds by Bain. That's a bounce pass there. Oh, exactly, he got to bounce it, but he really wasn't even open. Levers just had it in his mind he was going to throw the backdoor pass. Overton has a Lever screen. Rock works the other way, leaves it for Milko. Hit fake, no good. Mumford's got a man. Here comes Miller. Nice block by Overton to prevent the breakaway bucket. And they'll give him the two shots. Real good dribbling, ball handing by Mumford to get away from the LaSalle Explorer. There you see the hard foul by Overton, so Lance Miller couldn't get the easy jam for two. The real strong foul. But he got him from the side. He didn't get him from behind, so it wasn't an intentional foul. Bill to get the basketball. Overton had the speed to get Lance Miller from the side. LaSalle's been stuck on 11 for quite some time. Miller now with eight points to lead all scorers. And he scores all kinds of different ways. Driving, posting up, straight up jump shots, open floor. 
He's a pleasure to watch this young man come of age. Now with nine. And here comes the pressure. Levers middle of the floor. And that's the way they break the track. Heard. Almost throws it away. Does throw it away, but Overton has it back. And a foul call, Lance Miller. Speedy Morris, the head coach of LaSalle, was very concerned on how they would handle Villanova's pressure. Early in the contest here in the first eight minutes of the game, they're not doing a real good job because when the ball goes in the middle against the press, he has to turn whoever catches it and see who's open up floor. What's happening, they're just keeping it in the backcourt too long. Four-man stack in front of Jack Hurd as Rowley looks over a seven-point, a nine-point lead. And it's Doug Overton. They work their weave, their motion for a Hurd 12-footer. I think he was going to pass it. It was blocked. Woodard, good hustle. Has Miller three on one. Bain laid up. No. Rebound Mumford. Forced that one badly. He had about three or four passing options and opted not to use any of them. And there's a wet spot. Lance Miller asked the referees to stop the game, and they do. LaSalle's not doing a good job handling the basketball. They're making just real weak passes, not good crisp chest or bounce passes right now. And it's definitely hurting LaSalle. Villanova putting that strong man-to-man -man pressure on him. The jacket's off. The tie's getting undone. Rowley's still perfectly put together. Randy Woods short and off the clock. Villanova basketball. And again, LaSalle's been stuck on 11 for quite some time. Well, you got to give credit to Villanova. They're doing a real nice job, especially in good trap situations. Daldell and Neubauer back at the scorer's table. Pell on the perimeter. Bain, eight feet out, off the glass, that's sweet. Yeah, you can't even diagram that any better. As he caught the basketball, Aaron Bain, checked to see what the defense was doing. Bron Holland left him alone for the jumper. Heard to break the drought, no. And look at Mumford go high with Levers. He only gives up about 10 inches. And Neubauer back in for Randy Woods. And the hand is for Mumford. LaSalle has gone four minutes plus, stuck on 11. Overton, really long distance bombing, gets a three. Well, you see, Lance Miller knew he was going to shoot it, plus Lance Miller has a 6'6 body to frame, so Overton took it two steps back to get it over the guy. Daldell knocked out of bounds off the hands of Ron Holland. See, that's the key right there. As you see LaSalle shoot the basketball from distance, Rolly Massimino Villanova is always concerned because of the three-point shooters that LaSalle has. Bumper gets the big hand as David Miller returns. So all three point guards have gotten minutes in the first 10. There's David, Jr. Woodard, squares, never really got his feet set. And it's Overton through the legs, crosses over beautifully, misses the six footer. You know, right there, Doug Overton had a great opportunity to use the class right there. Bird, this time Woodard's together. No, rebound foul, Calvin Bird. Calvin's first. It's amazing how the game has changed. I've known both these guys for many years, and I'm talking about Rolly Massimino and Speedy Mars. Both coach handling the basketball, defensive pressure, let's keep the score low. Both these guys have gone the opposite way now. But all college basketball has. Yeah, and it's basically predicated on the teams that they have. Right in the three-point opportunity three now. I'll never forget Speedy in 85 saying, I hate that rule, I'll never use that. Get it out of here. Now he's shooting about 25 of them a game. They've shot 140 three-pointers in six games. Nice look to Holland. You can't play two-man basketball better than Jackie Hurd and Bron Holland did right there. Good defensive pressure by Villanova, but they just broke them down with a lot of nice passing. David Miller. 
to his brother Lance. Wide open, way long. As the momentum turns, it's Overton. It's a Holland screen. Neubauer all alone. And it's good for the kid, huh? Yeah, if you're filling over, you don't expect Jeff Neubauer to make the three, but he was wide open. And the 6'4 sophomore just nails it. His ninth three-pointer of the year. And it's back to a three-point ball game. An eight-point LaSalle run. Woodard off the screen. Rims out. Dowdell, big boy board, laid up and good. Mark Dowdell with his fourth point, but Speedy Morris got to be upset with Milko Levers. He's got to get a body on Dowdell and push him out of there. Levers helps out, but puts it on the floor. Ill-advised. And it's David Miller behind the back. Dowdell thinks about the three. Nice entry to Bird. Tries to keep it alive. And David Miller has Woodard stolen by Neubauer. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack Hurd with the steal. You have a lot of quick players in that floor. I'll tell you, Calvin Bird, Miller, Overton. Ron Holland, lovely pass to Overton. Sweet, sweet little entry. Well, there's not a quick player in Brian Holland, but there's a smart player as he was off balance. Saw the cutting Overton and used a nice bounce pass. 24-21. As we approach seven minutes, Larry Rosen heads to Fancy and Mark Dowdell back door. Jump hook. And that's the guy, that man right there, Speedy Mars, was worried about. He said, Mark Dowdell, I just love the way the kid plays. Well, he's come out and has six early points for the Wildcats. Neubauer in trouble. Throws to the corner. Levers to Overton. Very well schooled the South Club when they break the track. See, it's open for Milko Levers inside, but he's catching it so far. Now, Milko, Milko may not be able to make that pass and definitely can't put the ball on the floor. There's a bad pass. And Overton gets lucky. The shot's not lucky. The ball being in his hands was lucky. And did they just give him two points there? Yep, they gave him two. So he's got eight in the ball game. 26-23. LaSalle hanging tough. Double high screens on either side. Miller uses the left one. To Woodard. Entry to Bird. Dowdell 15. Mark Dowdell is the story in the first half. I don't want to sound like I'm the kid's agent, but the kid is having a terrific basketball game. He's shown as he's driving to the basket now, hits a jump shot, and there goes the steal. And there goes half a press row. Woodard! The old adage, defense is creating offense, and Villanova's doing it with full court pressure and real quick team on the floor right now. That's nine LaSalle turnovers. Holland from distance quiets the crowd. See, that's the key right now. They got four kids in here who can shoot the basketball. Milko Lieber's the inside guy, so LaSalle never out of the ball game with their shooters. There are six players at the scorer's table waiting to come in. I don't think the guys on the floor want to have a stop if they're having too much fun. 2-3 zone, 3-2 zone rather. Woodard spots up. And he just stayed with the jumper as Woodard has 10 points now. Jackie Hurd late to get there. He's got to come out and play him. Cutting Neubauer has Holland again. 15 feet out off the heel. Long rebound belongs to Levers. Hurd blocked from behind. Gets it back. Birds on the line. No, no basket. And now we've got the wholesale changes. Calvin Bird has been doing a good job defensively, so athletic. Hurd had the position, but there's Bird with the block. It's heating up. Eight-point lead, Villanova. Thinking about an Alfa Romeo? Think about two, the 164 and the Spider. One, a five-passenger, 140-mile-an-hour luxury sedan. The other, a five-speed, top-down, hands-on sports car. Why think about both? Because for what you probably thought you'd pay for one, you could have two.
For the test drive of your life, see the yellow pages for an Alpha dealer near you. Water. The VHP picture tube makes it seem like you're really there. Water. When you watch the new RCA home theater, it also has picks and picks, so you can watch two things at once in color. The new RCA home theater is just another way we're changing entertainment again. Come see all the great new RCA home entertainment products at La Pella's in Phoenixville. And welcome back, Roland Massimino diagramming strategy. And really, as expected, it's been a game of quickness and athleticism thus far. And it's been in the favor of Villanova because they've been running a lot of troops at the LaSalle Explorers, but their full court pressure, a 2-2-1 trapping defense, has given LaSalle all they can handle here in the first half. This series nearly evenly split since the mid-50s, the 45th meeting between the two of them. LaSalle Villanova, just like every big five game, but just LaSalle Villanova's had so many great games. I remember when Kenny Durrett, the great All-American from LaSalle, got hurt. Bobby Fields, his teammate, stepped up and had like 36, 20 rebounds and played Howard Porter and beat Villanova that year. So there's so many great stories in the big five and LaSalle has, Villanova has their share. That year that Eddie's talking about was 1971. And if you stay with us at halftime, you're going to see an awful lot more about that man, Ken Durrett, who we visited out in Pittsburgh. Well, Kenny Durrett is 42 years old, my boy. Well, I'll tell you what, he was one of the best, if not the best player ever in the Big Five. I thought it was Lionel Simmons took his role the last couple of years. Overton gets Miller in the air and takes it to the lane. That's a pretty nice move. His Lance Miller's a terrific defensive player. Just got him up in the air under control when he took the ball inside to avoid the offensive foul. And he cuts the margin of six-point Villanova lead. Back to man-to-man -to -man goes LaSalle. Mumford's on the floor with Walker. First time that combination's been together. And Mumford's got a quickness advantage. Down the lane, drops to Pell. Offensive foul, Lloyd Mumford. No basket as Levers lays down. See, that's what Lloyd Mumford's got to think. He's got to pull it up right here. He leaves his feet too early here to the basket. Milko Levers does a nice job to draw the offensive foul against Lloyd Mumford. But this is only really his first play in the season. He redshirted last year, so he'll learn. He's very quick to the basket. And that'll be a foul called on Chris Walker, hand-checking Doug Overton. And we've reached the one-and-one one for Villanova. LaSalle will be shooting free throws the rest of the way. Goodness, you look at the talent on that man, Roland Massimino's bench right now, with Woodard, Miller, Bird, Dowdell, Bryson, who hasn't played yet, Paul Grind, who's 7-2, and that's the guys that aren't playing. Well, he's done a good job recruiting. He sure has. He sure has. But what he's doing, he's using a lot of them, nine players, he's rotating them. He's playing this up-tempo style basketball, so Raleigh Massimino is using those good recruits he's recruited every year. And then he got Jonathan Haynes from Temple. He's committed to go to Villanova. Won't be available for another year and a half as Overton makes it 33-29, the first two foul shots for LaSalle this half, so they're two for two. And here's Mumford. Run a post up for Pell, there he is. Good job denying by Lieber, so it's Mumford on the other side. Over the back comes Aaron Bain. Good box out, Broderick President. Yeah, Broderick President, not known for his scoring, but he's a very good defensive player and is an intelligent player. Used his body to get Bain to go over the top. And here's Broderick. I guess, uh, excuse me, Speedy Morris likes this place. It must be like a home court advantage to him. He's won three games here. He won two games in one year here. But remember, he had that guy named Lionel Simmons yeah. who lit it up here. Yeah. There's Greg Woodard back in the game for Aaron Bain. Of course, it was 86-84, 71-70. He hasn't come in and run him off the floor. Well, I remember the first game Lionel Simmons played here at Villanova. And for some reason, Doug West tried to talk to him and get in his head. And I want to say to Doug, don't you know Lionel Simmons is from South Philly? You're not going to get in this kid's head. No. And uh, Lionel Simmons went out and tuned him up real good that day. Yeah. But that's college basketball. At its best. Dougie was a bit of a yapper. Especially when St. Joe or LaSalle came into the DuPont Pavilion. But Lionel Simmons never spoke. He just went out and showed people. And obviously, one of the best basketball players we've seen. And his numbers really started to pick up for Sacramento the last month or so. 
Dave Bob Bonner. Lionel's actually starting at the two-guard spot. Woods offensive rebound, but throws it away. And with a three-point ball game, we've got a timeout. As Ed Stefanski mentioned, uh, this always brings back the memories of Ken Durrett and the LaSalle Villanova matchups between Durrett and Porter. Kenny is the focus of our in-depth halftime report, but now let's get a preview of it. Kenny talks about playing against Villanova. It was just a great, great rivalry. And uh, then you remember people like Frankie Gill and the hot dog and things like that. You know, this is the things that goes on in the City Series. Game, the, thing, the kids throwing things and streamers and this, this the excitement in the fluster. I mean, at that time, it was no better basketball. I remember one time I was sitting out um, after I started when I graduated and went on to play pros. We were, me and Curtis Rowe was out somewhere. I think we were in Detroit and we were talking. And he was telling me how it was to play out there in the Poly Pavilion, out there in the UCLA. I said, you've never seen basketball until you've been in a Big Five game. There you go, Ken Durrett. What a wonderful story he'll he'll share with you at halftime. And we have found some old footage, buddy, from 69, from 71. We even found the footage when Kenny actually hurt that anterior crucian ligament against Canisius in 71. And that, of course, uh, Stoppa would have been a great pro career. Well, I did owe his remarks. I mean, if you haven't ever played in a, a big five game at the Palestra with 9,200 screaming fans on top of you, it's just a great thrill. And these big five games, these series have been just wonderful. And let's just hope they continue to play each other. Amen to that. Three-point basketball game. Villanova's led pretty much throughout. LaSalle closing in on its 1,000th victory as a program. And they would be the youngest program to get to 1,000. It took them only 61 years. A couple of wins away. They're 5-1 and one right now. And if they win their next three games, they're hoping to be in the top 20. And there's Walker. With Randy Woods gets it down Dell. Looked like a screen, but he popped out for the pass. They're isolating for Kella and Levers. Lay it up good and the foul. Well, that'll make a coach happy. Rowley's shaking his head. Yeah, that's what I asked for. Well, it was real good execution here as Pell came down and set the screen, but he was the, really the man they wanted to get the ball to, the screener. He set the screen, had his man, Levers, on his back. Watch this as he's going down. He puts Levers right on his back. Real strong move, but right there, if you want to be critical, Anthony Pell's got to take it to the basket, not lean out of bounds, and he'll learn it as he gathers his feet in, and he's stronger with his feet and his legs, he will be able to take that ball right to the hoop. Only a freshman, and he's going to have some real nice years here on the main line. Oh, yeah. 22 points, 17 reads a game as a freshman. This is the foul shot. Sorry, as a senior in high school at Adley Stevenson, where Eddie Pinkney went to school. So the pipeline continues. President to Randy Woods, who is, has a shot in a few minutes. Almost called it, but he's looking for a shot now. Through the legs, down the lane, left hand. Get that out of here, says Anthony Pell. Walker looking for the big guy down the wing. Has Miller, fakes the three. Looks for Pell, on the arm, and good. You gotta love the unselfishness of the Villanova players, and especially Lance Miller there. He had the opportunity for the jump shot, but he saw the freshman Anthony Pell wide open, and Pell gets two. Inside three minutes, half number one. Posted up Shelton. Jumper baseline short, off Shelton, Villanova basketball. Yeah, not a shot that I don't think the LaSalle staff wants Donnie Shelton taken out there. And Jack Hurd will place, replaces Jeff Neubauer here. LaSalle's got to watch themselves. They're down seven with 2.44 to go in the half. But Villanova's got that momentum right now. They've got to stick and play tough defense. And it's an isolation. Miller with Overton. Oh, he beats him on the crossover 15-footer. No. Hell, big boy. Hammer time. Okay, Anthony, you're a quick learner. That's what I wanted you to do. Get those feet and legs under you. But he smiled, a little smile. All his teammates are all over him. Lance Miller misses the jumper, but he's right there. Watch how he comes down strong, gathers himself, and it's a mismatch right there on Donnie Shelton. 
The freshman just strong to the basket. And boy, I'll tell you, it's only going to get better and better as this kid gets his offensive skills down. Well, that's really the only element that Villanova's been missing is a, a strong interior offensive post-up player. And Pell's uh, bringing it to the floor today, at least. He's missed a couple of foul shots, but the lead is at nine. Dell hits the deck. Overton's got a three. No. President knocked out of bounds by Miller. And I believe another wet spot. So we're speedy, December nice. 22nd and it's 60 degrees out here and that's a little unusual. I'm sure the humidity on the floor is awfully wet. Yeah. Kind of sweating out here. Randy Woods and Lance Miller talking to each other right now, chested inside, and the referee steps in to say something. And Dougie says, why are you only talking to us? Talk to them, too. Over to great athletic ability just to get the catch and knocks in the 15 foot Nothing yep. coming easy. Lance Miller decided to go for the steal, and he came for it as Overton hits a dozen points in the first half. Again, Miller isolated against Overton. Will take it himself. Hell in position. Foul called on Mark Daldell. Boxed out by Broderick President, which will send President to the line. Talked about Bro Broderick President's floor game. He does a nice job there. Miller has the easy shots. Got to knock it down. There's a good position by Broderick. Daldell throws that left elbow into him, and he gets caught by the official. Daldell will sit down with two personal fouls with 149 remaining. Replaced by James Bryson. The 6'10 sophomore out of Largo, Maryland. President. Played at Harden Simmons a year ago. Transferred, and since they changed divisions, out of Division One, he did not have to sit out the year. So he's a senior, giving the South quality minutes and a couple of free throws. I guess when you get those one-year players to come in and get you from era to era replacing Lionel, that's helped Speedy out. Club down by just five now. Double screen for Woodard. Has time to load the gun. Bryson climbs over Randy Woods. Speedy won the foul, but instead he gets the basketball. Woods, left hand. That'll be a block foul as Woods now is laying on top of Chris Walker. A lot of contact there. Randy, not bashful. Well, both of these kids are really going after each other as Woods just throws them down. Walker says he has good offense. There's the push down. It's like a little NFL football right there. <laughs> Don't run my area anymore. Walker will sit down with his two personals for David Miller. And you wonder if freshness will become a key issue down the stretch of this one, because Rowley's been able to shuttle troops. And I don't think we've mentioned it, LaSalle just coming back from Japan. It's a long flight, 14 hours or so. I mean, they gotta be a little tired down the road. That's well, what, why uh, Speedy is rotating players here. They had a tailwind coming back, right? It was not quite 14 on the way back, more like 11 coming home. Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> I've never been to Japan, so. No, me either, but the, you can, you can keep that trip, I think. 39-36 as LaSalle crawls back into it at the foul line, looking to trap now. Woodard walks. See, LaSalle's done a good job. We mentioned around three minutes to go. They were down nine, going up at the basketball. They've cut it now. They're only down three with a minute ten left in the half. With the basketball, going over man-to-man. -man. Screen, Woods, they'll switch, and Dougie kicks it off his own right foot out of bounds. Uncharacteristic for Doug Overton just to lose the basketball like that. There's your turnovers. Wildcats doing a great job protecting the basketball. Miller around Woods to Woodard, spots up, knocks it down. So Woodard has 13 points to lead all scorers. 
And there is a two second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. So the South can hold for one if they choose to. Randy Woods in a three man weave with President and Overton. President the screener. Woods and Overton, of course, the two ball handlers. And we're down to 20 seconds right now. Miller not going out to get Doug. Calls a 1-4. This is a penetration set for Doug Overton. Nope, gives it up to Randy Woods, who takes a three. Hits the deck. No, held the rebound. We've got seven seconds in counting. Miller has his brother David for three. In and out at the buzzer. So a hard-fought first half comes to an end. With that man's team, Roly Massimino, pretty much leading nearly from start to finish. They had a lead at 22-11, a double-digit lead. They had a lead at 9 at 30-21, and LaSalle was able to get some free throws down and get back in the offensive co uh, cohesiveness to close the gap to 6 at halftime. Of course, Roly Massimino able to use many more players than Speedy Morris. We'll see if that becomes a key issue for Speedy down the stretch. But Speedy now standing by to join with us for a couple of moments, and Ed Stefanski, and we'll get their impressions of half number one. Let's go to Eddie and Speedy. Speedy, early in the first half, the Villanova's defensive trap, they did a pretty good job. He threw the ball around a little bit. I thought they did a very good job. I also thought we did a terrible job of recognizing and doing what we're supposed to do. You know, I don't know. Uh, we're certainly not playing good basketball. Um, we're very fortunate to be down by six points. I think we'll come back and win the game. Uh, I, I know there's a couple guys I'm going to talk to, and if they come out and play the way they can, we'll win the game. We talked yesterday, Mark Dowdell, he's a favorite player of mine. He's playing pretty well against you. Well, I told you about Mark Dowdell. You didn't say anything about Mark Dowdell, so don't start that stuff. Mark <laughs> Dowdell, I, you know, I don't know why he plays 20 minutes a game. He's a terrific player, and he proved it. Uh, he's proven it tonight, but every, every time I see him, he's, he plays outstanding. He's a great player. Well, go in and have a good time at halftime. Thanks, eh? Okay, Speedy Morris is going in at halftime, and when he says Larry's going to talk to someone, believe me, hatch down the doors. <laughs> Indeed, and he did say he was confident that if those couple of guys he talks to listen, he expects to win his fourth consecutive game here at the DuPont Pavilion against Roly Massimino. His club is down by six at halftime. And as we mentioned during the course of their first half, we've got a very special look back at Kenny Durrett, graduate 1971 from LaSalle University, one of the best players in the history of Big Five basketball. Kenny is now proving to us that, yes, indeed, you can go home again. Let's look back with Ken Durrett. Nice seeing you. Nice being here. I'm glad that somebody remembered me. <laughs> of course we still remember Ken Durrett. Durrett, number 33, the dynamic forward who defined a proud era. Durrett, who took his position to a new level, as complete a player as his generation produced. Durrett, whose knee betrayed him, destroying a pro career that never really began. Durrett, 42 years old, after years of bitterness, is now ready to look back. And what a vision he will see. I feel well, I'm doing good, and you know, I've had some experiences. I'm just, I'm happy, and I'm happy to be able to um, be here to, to talk about this 20 years later. The Durrett saga actually begins 25 years ago at Shenley High School in the Pittsburgh neighborhood of Shadyside. Growing up on the hill, Durrett had vowed with his friends to bring a state title to Pittsburgh. The magic moment still on display when Durrett led Shenley over Chester High School at the Pittsburgh Civic Arena for the 1966 state championship. At age 18, he was the toast of the Iron City. Ken Durrett, the silky smooth forward, number 54, had led Shenley High School to the state basketball championship in 1966. Now it came time for a major decision in his life, where to attend college, the next stage of his career. Ken knew at the time it would take him out of Pittsburgh. He was truly a national recruit, visiting USC, New Mexico, Calvin Murphy and Niagara, and his early favorite, Villanova. And then the South called, like, a guy, Larry Cannon, to play Bernard Williams. I had met them. They came to Pittsburgh to play in the Dapper Dan, the first Dapper Dan in 1965. I had met them. And, we had talked, and, you know, when they called me and said, hey, look, LaSalle's going to have a great team. We need you. And I looked at them, and I said, hey, when we're so, when I'm a sophomore and they're a senior, 
we're going to have, you know, we're going to have a dynamite team. If I can, you know, so I decided to go, especially after Villanova kind of gave me the squash after they got geezer. They got hired Porter, so they figured they didn't need me. So I said, okay. I, that's the first thing I asked the cell was Jim Hardy at the time. I said, y'all play Villanova? He said, yeah. I said, I'll sign. <laughs> <laughs> Durrett had a prolific freshman year, and in late 68, as a sophomore, he was ready to join a senior-studded lineup for a run toward the top of the polls. But it was a time of transition at LaSalle. An NCAA investigation was on. Coach Jim Harding left to be replaced by the legendary Tom Gola. LaSalle knew that they were going to get hit with something, and we hadn't played our first game yet when the sentence was handed down. That was two years probation. So. The fellows who were on that team, there was no way that they were going to go to the NCAA. And uh, it was a tough, you know, thing to, uh, to get hit with, but uh, we had to live with it. So there would be no national tournament. The regular season took on added significance. LaSalle built a nearly perfect record, leading toward the only title it could win in the Big Five. The obstacle, Howard Porter and the Villanova Wildcats. We used to have these flaps on our warm-ups, and we were all out trying to get really for the dunking in the warm-up and doing our thing, right? And I come down, I, I roar through, and I swing the ball up to throw this dunk down backwards, and my flap jumps up between the basket and the rim, and I throw it, and it throws me straight to the floor. I was so hurt. <laughs> I got everybody's asking me. I was hurt and so bad, I said, leave me alone. <laughs> I was so embarrassed, and I was hurt. Well, stand by, America. In control. The game was not artistic, the proverbial typical Big Five game. LaSalle senior class featuring future pros Larry Cannon, Roland Fatty Taylor, and Bernie Williams did not have to remind Kenny of the significance of this one. He would be matched with the other super soft, Howard Porter, in what became a classic confrontation. Howard Porter and Kenny Durrett one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what happened. Durrett. 61, 55, 15 for Kenny Durrett. The great basketball player is Ken Durrett. He's going to get even better. He plays with both hands. He can shoot with either hand. They work to Porter from the line. It was a, a play at the end of the, almost at the end of the game where I got a ball on the baseline and Johnny Jones fouled me. Johnny, yeah, he fouled me and they swear I dunked the ball, you know, it was one of them kind of things. It was just that close. I had to, I had to kind of turn it down, but it really wasn't a thundering dunk because we couldn't dunk. But it was the kind of thing when he grabbed my arm, my arm came down. So it had to go. So George Ravelin and all that, everybody, it's, it, every time I see George now, he tells me, you still dunked that ball. <laughs> LaSalle played flawlessly in the closing minutes, claiming the only championship within their grasp. 23 wins, just one loss. Ranked second in the national polls, a bittersweet season that ended several nights later at Westchester. Those guys really, you know, wanted to prove something. And I think they did with the record that they had. And uh, I think that we could have beaten UCLA in the finals if we had played them. Durrett's junior year was not as successful, though he teamed with senior guard, now Penn head coach Fran Dunphy, to forge a winning record. We played in two tournaments. One was at the University of Tennessee, the other was a Quaker City tournament. He was MVP in neither, probably should have been MVP in both. Uh, ironically enough, I was the MVP in the Quaker City, and I, and I had a nice tournament, played well, but I didn't deserve to be the MVP. I thought that was all. Uh, we won the tournament because of him, not because of me. In his senior season, Durrett climbed to new heights, averaging over 27 points a game. Put a 45-foot hurting on Jim McDaniels and a powerful Western Kentucky squad. He won his third straight Big Five MVP award. He was truly everyone's All-American. But unbeknownst to anyone, a single flawed step late in that season would change his life. It came against Canisius in what would be a 40-point victory. We had a guy on our team named George Gareda. And only time George got in the game when he was coming in for me. And I think I must have had 20 points in the first quarter, first half or something. So I seen George going to the scorer's table. So I snatched his last rebound. And I decided to take off with it. I took off. So going down, Jimmy Crawford was cutting. And I was going to pass it to him, but a guy cut in. So I decided to keep it. And when I decided to keep it, a guy cut off in front of me. I tried to go behind him. And I, and I, all I remember from that point is pain. 
You know, I, I just remember pain. And I always say, maybe I should have passed that ball. <laughs> Durrett would eventually return and play that evening on one leg. He would limp through the rest of his college career, unaware that he had suffered a torn anterior cruciate ligament. An injury that today still requires lengthy rehabilitation, but 20 years ago was nearly undetectable. He was declared medically fit and ready to turn professional. These were the days of the bidding wars between the NBA and the old ABA. I was elected city controller in 70, so I had to resign uh, my position at LaSalle. And when I left, I had said to Kenny in his senior year, I said, don't sign anything with anybody. I says, call me first. All right, because there were so-called agents out there who were signing these kids up to agent contracts. And Kenny called me 11 o'clock at night and uh, told me there was a guy, a friend of his in Pittsburgh, and a lawyer who had a contract for him to sign with the Pittsburgh uh, team. <laughs> and I shot over there, and we, we put that to, to rest, and we chased the guy, and, and Kenny finished playing his senior year. But if you remember Howard Porter at Villanova, he signed with an agent, and that's what they were doing in those days. And, you know, you, you can't blame the kids because they were giving them upfront money, and these were kids who never had anything in their life. But Kenny fortunately called me, and we chased the guy, and uh, he went on, and uh, I helped him negotiate his contract. And uh, he, uh, you know, except for the injury, probably would have had a great career. Durrett was selected fourth overall in the 71 draft by the Kansas City Kings. He slipped in preseason, further aggravating the injured leg, eventually facing surgery, which did little to relieve his suffering and nothing to cure his problem. Kenny would play parts of three seasons with the Kings before eventually ending his career as a Philadelphia 76er. For a while, I was a little bitter. You know, I was a little bitter because, you know, I, I worked hard to get where I had to be, you know, and... Um, and it, it took me a while to get back. And then I realized, I said, I'm not bitter at the game. I'm just bitter at some of the things that go around the game. It's not about that. It's about, you know, and I, you know, because I wouldn't go to a basketball game for a while. I didn't even want to watch a basketball game, you know, because it was that kind of thing. But then you get back into it and, you know, you start, you know, it's my first love, you know. Basketball did a lot for me, more than anything, probably uh, put me in places I would have never been if it doesn't, don't, don't be for the uh, chance of play, playing basketball. <laughs> And once he could not play basketball, Ken returned to LaSalle, served as an assistant coach, and earned his degree. He's owned businesses, done some high school coaching, and is raising his family. And now, with the blessing of time, there is remarkable clarity to these cherished memories. Ken Durrett, thoroughbred, is at peace with his legacy. You know, I would love to go on and been what I felt that I wanted to do. And you know, I had some goals that I wanted to to prove in professionally, and I, you know, and I thought that I had worked to be as good as anybody that ever played. You know, it didn't happen that way, but you know, um, I'm happy with myself, and I got a chance to be able to do some things. There's a lot of guys that didn't get a chance to go as far as I did, and you know, and I got to be happy. I, you know, life goes on, regardless of Kenny the best player of basketball. Not, life goes on, so you know, I just got to be happy and, and enjoy. It. Now, I'm happy because I get a chance to do things like this. You know, you know, you get a chance to do things, you meet people, and. People remember some things you did, and you know, I'm just glad that I'm going to be a part of some of the history that goes on in the Philadelphia area. Season's greetings from the Phillies, the Flyers, the Sixers, and the place they all call home, Prism. And welcome back to a fired up DuPont Pavilion. We had a couple of fired up coaches at halftime. It's a six point Villanova basketball game. Larry Rosen with Ed Stefanski. Kind of what you might have expected, huh? Oh, yeah, the three point shooting and everything. But I'll be honest with you, I'd love to have been in that LaSalle locker room at halftime. That man, he's a little upset. And it's with Randy Woods because Randy Woods has had some opportunities to shoot the ball from distance and went in and got inside and lost the basketball. He's got a little macho on him, I think. Yes. That's one of Randy's things. We'll go back, look at the key moments from this one, our Prism exclusive game two of our triple header pick it up with some defense uh, leading into offense here Ron Holland with the strip and we'll go down the floor with who else the All-American Doug Overton and Dougie can shoot and he obviously can also pass there's the drop off for the Shelton layup and again the points have not come easily for LaSalle here off the offensive glass it'll be Ron Holland with a little no look bounce pass to Doug Overton and he's got the bucket. So on the LaSalle scoring, it goes this way. Overton with 13, Woods with 7. Holland 4, President with 3, Neubauer 3, 
Levers with two. Meantime, on the other end, for Villanova, their defense creates the offense in the person of Lance Miller, and in the open floor, we'll see Greg Woodard. I'm sorry, it's David Miller who finds Woodard for the finger roll up and good. And the real big story in that first half has been one Anthony Pell, the freshman from New York, pins his man, takes it with the right hand, turns, and lays it up and good. Pell has had a real big first half. There you see him with six. Woodard leads all scores with 13. Miller nine, Dowdell eight, Pell six. Bain four, and Bird just the one bucket. There's the team statistics. LaSalle out rebounding Villanova by a comfortable margin, but they just haven't made their shots. And again, there's been 23 point shots in half number one. Speedy Mars has seemed awfully confident at halftime if he could make a few changes there and shooting the basketball that they would have a legitimate shot in the second half. And I think he's right because Villanova could have put him away maybe in the first half or have a bigger advantage and they let LaSalle in the basketball game. How much, Eddie, does depth play a part in a game this stage of the season? Emotions running high in a big five game, obviously. Villanova's played many more players uh, and they've spread the minutes more. Well, we talked about him just coming from Japan last week, a long flight home. Plus, it's awfully hot in here. I know I'm hot, and these kids are sweating out there. So it's going to be very, it's going to be a toll here. And you'll see, and I think Villanova's going to keep rotating those players in and out. So we are set for half number two of this one. Of course, the Sixers and Detroit Pistons to follow at 7.30. Mark Zumoff standing by to lead you into that one with Jack Ramsey and Jim Barniak. Sixers coming off a wipeout victory down in Miami. And they played very, relatively well when they've had a, two games in succession. I hope my man is watching this game down at the Spectrum, and that is Chuck Daly, the head coach of the Detroit Pistons. My former coach at Penn, and if he is, I want to wish he and his family a Merry Christmas. And he remembers these words, believe me, and I'm sure if he has a minute or two, he's down there at the Spectrum watching this contest. Now, Roldy, of course, was on a staff with Chuck at the University of Pennsylvania. Bob Weinauer is the assistant for the Sixers, was on his staff. And they were, of course, recruiting Speedy's kids at uh, Roman Catholic back in the day. So, as always, with just about any NBA team that comes to town, a lot of Philadelphia connections. We are underway, Villanova to our right. Mumford and Miller in the backcourt with Bain, Dell and Woodard for Villanova. Lob pass, entry, Dell cut by Mumford. Sweet little shovel. Well, perfect execution, nice diagonal passes. What happened is Randy Woods was watching the basketball. Mumford just cut. He was wide open. Good bounce pass by Dowdell. President will go one-on-one -on -one and leave it for Jack Hurd. Steps away for three. How about Jack Hurd? He had to have a big game, only had two points in the first half. He gets his fifth point, but he stepped back to get that three-point opportunity. And Randy Woods' quickness creates a turnover on the inbounds. One-man press right there by <laughs> Randy Woods. Again, teaching a lesson to young Lloyd Mumford. Levers off the set out of bounds as a layup. So a five-point swing in about five seconds gets LaSalle back within three. Hand check foul Randy Woods. So Randy Woods giveth and Randy Woods taketh away. And that's his second personal. See, Randy Woods has to be... He wants to be aggressive, that's his style, but he can't play that close to Mumford. Mumford extremely quick with the basketball. He's just gonna pick up cheap fouls if he gets that tight to him. Now Woodard matched up with Overton, Bain and President. Double team help comes from Levers, and a traveling call will come against Miller. Nice double team by Levers. Good team defense by LaSalle with the double team and then a rotation. And what they did is they took away the lanes for Villanova. Checking out the matchups man to man. Bain's got Levers, which means Daldell's got to follow Jack Hurd. Cut by Overton in the air. No. Hurd a tip. No. Levers strong with the jump hook. No. Out of bounds. No. It's held in by Hurd. Why not? See, Jackie Hurd's got the stroke right now. He can shoot the basketball as we know. And Aaron, excuse me, Pell did a good job in the first half defending him. Seven unanswered explorer points. Bumper quick with the left. Dell takes the three. It's Lance Miller. 
Mumford throws it right to the hands of Levers. Woods keeps it alive. Dell Dell's got Bain for the layup. A lot of quick hands on the floor right now. And you better not be weak with the basketball in traffic. Overton crosses over around Miller. A hand check. check. Yeah. Over Overton extremely good with the basketball. It's like part of his hand and extension. And in the open floor there, Lance Miller's just got to stay down. Can't reach like that. First team foul, Villanova. LaSalle with a chance to tie with a three. Woods has Levers posted. They try to break down Mumford with the quickness, and Mumford fouls him. Well, if Randy Woods believes he has the advantage, believe me, there's no height advantage, both 5'10", but Woods is so strong right there, and when you come from behind, normally the official's gonna call it, Mumford might have had all ball. Right here, he might have had all ball, but Randy Woods will go to the line for two shots. And the quickness on Mumford, I mean, what a quick matchup that is. Mumford, the first guy on either team with the three fouls, as Woods now has eight points. He's perfect in the line, three out of three. One point ball game. Randy Woods with those gunslinger eyes looking over Mumford. Breaks the pressure himself. Bain to Mumford. Dowdell is posted. Drop step Mumford's three. Lloyd Mumford, freshman can really play the game. We know he's quick, he can drive to the basket, but if he can knock down the jumper, that will really help Villanova's continuity on offense. And that may be the man team with Jonathan Haynes in a couple of years. President with a good cut. And Levers the nice look. One of the few easy buckets the Sal's wound up with. Chris Walker heads to the scorer's table, as does Calvin Bird. Dowdell is stripped by Randy Wood. Here goes Randy, it's just a little layup. Randy Woods had it. He knew what was happening there. He just left his man Mumford as soon as Dowdell put the ball on the floor. There was the quick Randy Woods. Now he's going to be all over Mumford. And the LaSalle cheering section rises as one behind his elbow by Dowdell. Foul on Levers, and Speedy can't believe it. Well, I think it might have been a good call because I think Levers gets right up. Let's see if he gives him a chance to turn. He's right up on him. He's chesting him. There's the foul right away. Good call by the official. Yeah, good call. They'll go leaning forward. Woodard will sit down for Villanova. So Walker and Mumford on the floor together. With Lance Miller, Aaron Bain, and Mark Daldell. And Rowley sure can give you a lot of different looks. Bird tries the entry. We've got bodies flying. Bird's got it. Randy Woods kicks at the basketball. We've got four hands to call. I love Randy Woods. He said, I can't. My hands are at the opposite end. He tries to kick the ball. I think that's a violation. They're going to give the basketball to LaSalle on the held ball. And Randy Woods and, and uh, LaSalle have forced four early Villanova turnovers without making that kind of miscue themselves. Doug Overton looking for some help, trying to instruct Jack Hurd where to go. But he'll break the pressure on the dribble to Woods. Has Hurd wide open. And the foul! Wow! I mean, we're talking perfect execution by the LaSalle Explorers right there. Overton got it, made a real nice pass to Woods. Now that's the key. Woods in the middle is better than Levers breaking the press. And Jackie Hurd knew what to do with it. A strong left-handed pass. He's going to take it all the way. 6-6. He just jams it in on Dowdell. Real strong move by Jack Hurd. And Dowdell now with three personal fouls. See, in the first half, that ball normally is going to Milko Levers in the middle. He can't turn and face and do things that Randy Woods can do with the basketball. Hurd keeps it alive for Mumford. Turns into a fast break the other way. Miller crosses over to the lane, and he's fouled by Broderick President. Lance Miller always under control. He's penetrating, but he knows what he's doing with his body there as President tries to grab the foul, but it's on him. 
The hand is for Anthony Pell, number 52, who was a revelation in the closing moments of half number one. And he's in with Dowdell now as Bird sits down. So this is the big look squad. And Lance Miller. Out of Bridgewater, Raritan High School in Bridgewater, New Jersey, where they pretty much owned the state championship during his years. They were 1-11-5 when that man, Lance Miller, was playing. And he's got a couple. So we are in a flat-footed tie, 51-51. Words of wisdom coming for both coaches. We'll be back right after this. Our projection screen looks so real, you'll feel like part of the show when you watch the new RCA home theater. It also has surround sound that's so real. Stand back, everyone. You'll forget you're sitting at home. Let me handle this. The new RCA home theater is just another way we're changing entertainment again. Come see all the great new RCA home entertainment products at Stainton. Some channels have movies, but not sports. Some channels have sports, but not movies. Some channels have sports, but they don't have the home teams. All the home teams in live, exclusive home games. Only Prism has it all. The best variety of movies and the teams you want to watch all on one channel. Prism, the great two-for-one channel. It's the only channel you need for the best entertainment on cable TV. This is really our first extended look at Lloyd Mumford, who's only played a couple of minutes thus far this season. Here he is. Off the dish, very, very quick. And he puts in another dimension. If now, right now, Roy Matsman has decided to play 15, Chris Walker, number four, Lloyd Mumford. So that's a different look that Bill Miller's going to give. And as noted, Speedy Morris, four and one in his career against Roly Massimino the last time Villanova won was back in the, the race for the ring, the old Jostens Classic that uh, we had for a few years for you. So it's Herd Wood President Leverst Overton for the South. Walker, Mumford, Miller, Pell, and Dowdell for Villanova. And they pick up man-to-man -man full court. Dougie trying to beat the double team. Finds President. It's a three-on-one. Lever steps away, had a 10-footer, and passed it up. See, so you got to score. You have three-on-one. You got to get a layup or a shot at it. Woods from NBA. <laughs> Randy Villanova. Woods killed Villanova and Rolly Mazzamino late in the game last year at the Civic Center. I mean, he shoots from downtown, as does Jackie Hurd, as does Overton. You have to play him as soon as they get past half court. He's got 14. Turnover through the hands of Pell. Woods is ahead of the pack. Dougie uses Hurd instead. He'll go glass. Nice rebound, Pell. But Randy Woods, the one-man trap, drops it off. Dougie steps away three. Woods, the offensive rebound. He'll take it himself, and he's fouled. And he's smiling. Look at the smile on the face of Randy Woods. Well, he's a one-man show right now. I mean, the kid is all over the floor. They have him at six foot. Let's make it 5'10". But there's a strong rebound, but there's Woods with his hands. Great quick hands. Watch the pass. Looks away from it there. Overton's got to knock this down now to make it a great play. But he's going to miss it. And now Woods is right back in there. He says, should I take it out? He sees the players coming. Nice fake. Gets to create the foul. That'll be Chris Walker's third personal foul. And Randy, who had to sit out the first several games, is uh, trying to make up for it in a hurry. But look at if we can get a shot of his upper body right there. This man, he's a strong, strong young man. So he's tough defensively when he gets those arms and upper body strength into it. And he had a man-sized looking body for a point guard at Ben Franklin High School. And he's growing. LaSalle builds a 56-51 lead. Early stages, half number two, Larry Rosen, Ed Stefanski with you live from DuPont Pavilion. And it's everything we could have hoped for. Miller has Walker for a three. Short, over to the board. Looks to run. Head up all the way. Dougie explodes to the lane. Yes! Got to call an offensive foul, Doug Overton. And no basket, I don't believe. Let's see if Chris Walker got there early enough. Overton's going to take it all the way. 
he slides in, they're not going to give him the shot either. Let's see if the ball is out of his hand right here. Contact, it's real tight. I couldn't see if Chris Walker's feet were there to grab the offensive foul. That is number two on Doug Overton. And that could be a momentum turner. Would have built the lead up to as high as eight if he made the foul shot foul. Ron Holland pushing on Aaron Bain. And was that Doug Overton's third foul? Or second. Second foul, okay. Officially. Uh, what explosive speed up the floor. What's uh, going up? We talk about it every telecast. They'll try to score in this out of bounds play. You got to be aware. It'll be Woodard coming off the screen. There he is, and Doug Overton standing in the passing lanes waiting for him. Bain at the high post. Goes one on three. Offensive foul. Aaron Bain right there just put his head down. Usually has real good court appearance. He just ducks his shoulder right in there, tries to go in between, but Levers does a nice job drawing the offensive foul. That's three on Bain. So despite Rowley's depth, he's got a number of players with three personal fouls. Speedy calls the three up. Heard coming off the screen. Over it looks for him. Woodard is following. It's Woods on the other side. For three. Levers and one. Give that basket to Jackie Heard, the 6'6". Forward kept it real alive right here from Milka Levers. We'll see Randy Wood shoot the three and it'll go long. But there's Jack Hurd coming around his man. Woodard keeps it alive right there for 44 Levers and he gets the chance for a three point opportunity. There's 25 and Levers being aware of where the basketball is goes hard and gets the basket. Milko now with six points and eight boards. Villanova brings Daldell and Bird in. It's amazing, you're bringing a 6'9 and a 6'7 for a pair of 5'11 point guards. <laughs> and you change your whole complexion of your team. This, With this set, Lance Miller at 6'6 becomes your point guard, and you're just gone big all over. And that's fine right now because Rolly Mazzamino's down eight. But Woods could put a lot of pressure on Lance Miller. Lance Miller's got to be able to take care of the basketball. And Doug Overton's got Greg Woodard on the other side. Miller at the foul line. Soft touch, Daldell the offensive board, back to Miller. Bain raises. That's a big bucket. You have two fine basketball teams going at each other. LaSalle made the run, Villanova needed a bucket down eight. Take care of the basketball, Aaron Bain knocks it down. And here's Calvin Bird with Doug Overton. Great matchup out front. Dougie sticks on the right hand, picks up the dribble, Holland helps him out. It'll be a travel on Ron Holland. LaSalle had to start their play too wide there. Doug Overton picked up his dribble. They good, good pressure. Bron Holland, 30 feet from the basket, he walked. And after six and a half minutes, that's only the first turnover of the second half on LaSalle. Lance Miller looks for the bird screen. Woodard with a double screen over Levers. Skying his Bain. Aaron Bain's coming to play right now gets two quick buckets. We saw him in the St. Joe Villanova game knock him down from distance, and now he's got the Villanova faithful into the game. Yeah, Calvin Bird exhorting the crowd. The hand back to Overton, fades away and fires it down. That's a pro shot from Doug Overton. Well, that's why the NBA is going to pay him a lot of money next year as he creates the basket. Still 61-55. Woodard has it on his right hip. Against LaSalle, man to man. Holland trying to front on Bird, helps out on the Woodard drive. No blood, no foul. And Woodard's got 15. Something Woodard usually doesn't do, drive all the way basket, but Greg Woodard shows the nice patience and poise. We've got a scorcher on the main line with 12 minutes remaining. No one in the paint. As Overton is hand-checked by Calvin Bird, and they go nose to nose. Dougie comes out with a big smile on his face. Oh yeah, they're they're both playing extremely hard. Again, these kids play a lot in the Sunny Hill Basketball, College Basketball League in the summertime in Philadelphia. Inner city rivalry, they're going out and they're playing real good, aggressive, clean basketball game. Well, that will be the 17th foul on Villanova. 
which will put Overton on the free throw line. Where he's only an 84 percenter. Remember when the knock was that this kid couldn't shoot? Doug Overton <laughs> coming out of high school, Dobbins in Philadelphia, Dobbins High School. Under he Rick in, Right, he came in and Richie Tarr was the leading uh, guard. And there was some other guard. I got to think who the other guard was. Tim Legler. Tim Legler. Doug got a lot of minutes, but they said he couldn't shoot the basketball. They knew he could handle it and be the uh, point guard. Now he's showing he can do a little bit of both. Sal builds a lead of six points at 63-57 inside 12 minutes on a red hot one here at Villanova. The best place to be on cable TV is Prism. Only Prism has a dynamite movie lineup featuring Chevy Chase in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, the hilarious controversial documentary Roger and Me, the epic outdoor adventure of The Bear. Eric Roberts and Cheech Marin in Rude Awakening, and Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell in Tango and Cash. Only Prism has an unbeatable sports lineup, featuring the Flyers in 32 games live from the Spectrum, the 76ers defending their Atlantic Division title in 40 games live from the Spectrum, and Temple, St. Joe's, LaSalle, Penn, and Villanova battling it out for the Big Five City Series title in 10 games you can only see on Prism. More than a movie channel, more than a sports channel, Prism is two channels for the price of one. It's the only channel you need for the best entertainment on cable TV. Well, you know that the LaSalle defense is, uh, the catalyst for it is Randy Woods with those quick, quick hands. Here the steal will go the length of the floor. Just a little baby finger roll. Oh, he, the kid is just so quick and strong. There you see Woodard throwing the three. But Bain, good position here by Aaron Bain. He gets another basket, an easy one inside. Aaron Bain positioning himself. And it is literally heating up in the oh, building. I'm telling you, it's got to be 90 in this building. It's 60-some outside. It's 90 in here. You can see the kids, the perspiration on all the Villanova players. We'll reset the floor for you. It's the big team for Villanova. With Bird, Dowdell, Lance Miller, Aaron Bain, and Greg Woodard, who's been quiet. Meantime for LaSalle, the three-guard set. Heard Overton and Woods with Ron Holland and Milko Levers down on the blocks. And there's Lance, almost turns it over. Dowdell high. Looks for Bird across the paint through his hands. Woods the double team. Step in front by Jack Hurd. Had it. Great defensive Good. rotation. Yeah, excellent rotation as Woods went down to double team on Bird. He was in trouble because Woods was all over him. Woods throws it out. Watch Woods all over. Bird just says, let me get rid of this thing. Tries to come over and Hurd just can't get the handle. 25 on the shot clock. The shot clock has not been an issue. <laughs> Forget the shot clock. <laughs> Down, down, why not? That's why. Rebound over to four on two. Over to head high, as always. Left hand dribble to Hurd, wide open. That's his shot. And Lance Miller will play walk it up basketball with the 11 11, half number two. Woodard for three, short. And Holland just breaks it free as Calvin Bird had the position. Smart little move by Bron Holland. Backdoor cut by Holland, passes tip, he still has it. I guess Brian Holland has a good pair of hands right there because that was a terrible pass by Doug Overton. Holland tipped it with his right, caught it with his left, kept it on his left, and now they have an eight point advantage with 10.45 left in the game. And they've taken the crowd out of it after they had Rose, uh, Rose's one on a main putback. I think Rowley needs to get Chris Walker and Mumford back in the lineup to run the stuff here offensively. Blocking foul called on Jack Hurd. He and Bain toe to toe. Aaron Bain goes right by Levers, and there's your block by Hurd. And what's great, they're playing real aggressive, but they're both helping each up off the floor. Bain goes and extends his hand to Jackie Hurd. And uh, as Coach Stefanski predicted, the true point guard, Chris Walker, comes back in, replacing Calvin Bird. Jeff Neubauer is in. Set out of bounds for a Woodard. Little layup. It's got to drive you nuts if you're a head coach playing Villanova because you know the plays they love to get, but they execute so well with the ball underneath their basket. Woodard a quiet 17 now. 
Overton and Miller. Randy Woods cracks back to the basketball. They run a five and a push foul on Woodard. Dylan Overbench wants an elbow on Woods, but clearly a push by that man, Woodard. And this will be one and one. Very difficult matchup for Woodard to play Woods because of Woods' quickness and ball handling skills. And the factor is this early, 10 minutes and 12 seconds, seven fouls, but LaSalle can get in that shot, the 10th foul, to get those two shots at the, at the basket. Randy Woods now with 16 points, seven boards, six for six from the line. There's Randy. Finally misses from the foul line, but what does he do? He runs it down. Overton gets a screen from Holland, spins off it. Being double teamed, Lee burst on the baseline. Needs a hand. The cut is by Newbauer. Great look, Holland. Real nice play by Newbauer. They were in trouble, but Neubauer had the presence to cut back door, grab the pass, and find Ron Holland. Roly Massimino needs a timeout. His club is down by nine on its own home floor as we pass the halfway point of the second half. Lieutenant, is there a six-foot bat in Gotham City? The real story. The love story. A woman in danger. A hero in black. Vicky Vale. Hi. Bruce Wayne. And what do you do for a living? Nice outfit. Jack is dead, my friend. You can call me. Terrorizes. Wait till they get a load of me. Don't kill me! Don't kill me, man! What are you? I'm Batman. Well, Bron Holland's interior offense has really been a key. Look at the hands here, Eddie. Yeah, the hit with the right hand, grabs it with the left, keeps it on the left. I mean, Bron Holland did a real nice job to control the basketball because that was a turnover. But here's Jeff Neubauer with a nice cut to the basket, brings two going over defenders, and Bron Holland's another recipient for a layup. Bron Holland likes to play with these guards as he points over and says, nice pass to Jeff Neubauer. Randy Woods, leading all scorers in the second half, has 10 now, and the lead is at 9. And in the second half, the Explorers have had just the one turnover to the Wildcats 6. The game total is 11-11. Well, Villanova has come into the contest turning the ball over at roughly 15 a clip, where LaSalle did a much, much better job handling the basketball, and they're doing a good job here in the second half. Field goal shooting, LaSalle is 11 for 17 in the second half. Mumford walks, nope. They're gonna call the block foul on Levers first. And you're right, he's real lucky because he might have walked first. And then the foul, let's see, Mumford goes right by Randy Woods, jump steps, now nah, gets him on the foot there, who knows. Okay, he's standing on Milko's left foot with his right one, which was dragging, obviously. And Mumford's had five points. Well, right there with Mumford in the lineup, Randy Woods has got to play solid defense. Don't go for the steal against the quick football handling Mumford, just control him. And I'll tell you, Chris Walker's line is virtually empty on the stat sheet. Just has one assist, the usual starting point guard. Well, to give Chris Walker a little bit of excuse, he had uh, dental problems yesterday, and I think they pulled a tooth, and uh, you know it's not much fun, and I'm sure he's not feeling up to par this afternoon. Johnny Shelton replaces Bilko Levers, because Levers now has three fouls, and Mumford makes to cut the lead to eight. As expected, all-court pressure, steal Mumford, pass winner. Here comes the run. Woods has Overton with him, goes over the top of Dell. Dell for the layup. And what they did nicely there is when Woods caught the basketball, he didn't let the double team of the Villanova trap. He just spin real fast and drove the ball down the court. Mumford kicks to Lance Miller. He might have walked. Woodard with a hand check from Overton to Bain. 
No, Miller fouled Neubauer. And Jeff Neubauer is upset with himself that he didn't have the rebound. It was a long shot. It came off long. He didn't see Lance Miller. Lance Miller went right in there. Neubauer picks up the foul. And he'll pick up a seat on the bench next to Randy Monroe and Joe Mahalik behind Speedy Morris for Jack Hurd. Good minutes out of Jeff, though. See LaSalle there in the last couple of possessions went zone defense, went out of the man-to-man. -man. You really have to know where people are in the zone defense when you're blocking out. Lance has 11 and had 9 at halftime. You know right now that man's going to put on full court pressure if Lance Miller can knock it down. Lead is at six. Woods again spins to his left side. Bunker trips, and he's got Overton with him. Dougie wisely resets the scene, man to man, with Lance Miller. I love that matchup, Overton and Miller, on both ends of the floor. Woods tries a backdoor cut. Nice look. Ron Holland, a beautiful pass to Woods. And what Woods did great is he looked off the defender. I think it was Wooder ran at him. He looked him off. He thought he was going to make the pass, and he gets to two. The lead's at eight once more. Daldell is posted. Looks to the left. Where he finds Woodard. Head fake. Blocked by Shelton. Rebound by Shelton. As Overton. And Dougie mellows it out a little bit. Sal's playing nice basketball, Eddie. Playing much better in the second half as Speedy Mars predicted they would play. Woods posted on Mumford. Tough matchup. Too strong. Cannot <laughs> handle Randy Woods. That's exactly right. The strength of Randy Woods right now. His upper body is extremely strong. He's just posting Mumford in there. Leans on him and gets the two. Creates the foul right there. That is great coaching out of Speedy, too, to spread the floor and put a 5-foot, 10-inch point guard in the middle of the box and say, go one-on-one -on -one and get me three. And now Roly Mazzamino saying, hey, you can't cover him inside there. You try the best you can. You got to front him. But right now, he's going to go with Dave Miller. There's David. Mumford sits down with four personal fouls. And again, we've seen very limited minutes out of Chris Walker, who had a two-pull yesterday. The lead is at 11, the Sal's largest of the afternoon. Larry Rosen, Ed Stefanski with you as we approach eight minutes on this Big Five basketball game, which the second half has belonged to the Sal's Explorers. Woodard's got a three. No, it's a two. He steps up. No, it's a three. One rep had it as a two, but they're going to give all three of them. And he's got 22. Over to bad pass. A trip. He tripped him. Daldell trips Bain. Holland is fouled. He got a call foul because it's like bowling ball pins going down right now. Ah, this is great. Both teams playing aggressive, real good, clean basketball right here, but they're going at each other. You love this, though. Oh, you? I love it. Watch this. There's maybe two fouls there. There's the trip by Mark <laughs> Valdell. Good spirit. Watch as Bron Holland goes up. Let's see if he gets fouled here. The ball just flies over. He just lost the handle, and they finally caught a foul. I don't think yeah. there might even have been a foul on that one. He was the one guy not hit. <laughs> as Jack Hurd was slammed by Woodard. Of course, there was the trip originally, and he may have been able to call Braun on the first foul. Yeah, you might have had Braun Holland, but uh, what is it, offense is allowed to go for the basketball as much as defense? And here's Braun. See, it's a lot easier. I hate this 10, on the 10th foul, you get two shots, because right there, Braun Holland, Misses the first, he gets a chance for the second. That one-on-one -on -one keeps the suspense in it all the way. I kind of agree that you give you give him two after a certain point. I just you can't just foul repeatedly without there being any kind of penalty. Uh, it's going to make the still will make the game long. See right there, he gets a point that he wouldn't have gotten. Roderick Precedent checks in for the free throw shooter, Ron Holland. Terrific game out of Ron Holland this evening. Quarter to six already. <laughs> so we've got 7.30. And a nine-point ball game. Miller raises. It's a big shot. He's got 16. 
Woods, the long pass, has Hurd cutting, has Shelton cutting, but Doug pulls it back out. Good job by Speedy Morris coaching here. They're really destroying the second half here in the press. Yeah, that's great coaching, huh? Well, that's just, uh, they're going to fire from downtown. We know that. But the South made a couple adjustments in their full court uh, zone offense, and they've done a good job against Villanova's pressure. They got hurt in the first half by it. Dell thinks about it from 16, is fouled on the way past the push from Broderick Precedent. And that should be number 10 on the South, which will get uh, Dell two free throws. Shelton will sit down, Levers returns. And Calvin Bird wants to come in for the shooter. Well, Mark, you gotta hit the shots first, there you go. 79-70, 6.58 and counting for Mark Daldell's free throw. Misses, it's only the 19th foul, so it does not get that extra shot. And will not have to, oh, Speedy's running out of the gym. But I don't think it's Speedy should because I think Woods hit the ball and Overton made a mistake by not going for the basketball. He might be upset with Doug Overton, not the official. So uh, Villanova gets a possession. Lance Miller. Playing with his brother, David. He's trying to open up the paint area. Woodard will come off the main screen. See, here Wood he comes. They go the other way. Over the shoulder comes Hurd. See, defensively now with David Miller in the lineup, I think Woods has got to cheat. If he can make him pick his dribble up and then go pack it right in and take away the motion offense that Villanova's trying to run inside. There's been so much talk about Villanova and its continued association with the other big five teams. When you watch Providence play, St. Leo, you know, yeah, well. you watch Georgetown, and these are really tough out-of-conference battles for Roley Massimino's club. Obviously, Speedy moves on to the MAC, right, but these are the best opponents that he plays. That's the major difference. Villanova moves on to the Big East. So every game Villanova plays in most of their games all year are wars because the four games in the Big Five are absolute wars. And they've got the national television appearances against national opponents and the Big East. Only really two or three, quote, easy games, if you can use that expression anymore, on Villanova's schedule. And this is not one of them. Two out of two for Miller. Now eight of eight from the line. The lead is back to seven. And Nova's going to make a run. You can bet on that. Six and a half in their 1-3-1 one, three, one, three quarter court trap that Wood steps between. Gets it back from Overton. Has a wing shot for President. I don't think they want that one out of Broderick. No way do they want that shot. Miller, nine feet away. Can't get it to fall. And Milko Levers has been dynamic on the defensive glass. See, Lance Miller's a good shooter. He's got to hit that shot an eight-footer straight away, especially when they play the real good defense on the other end. They double stack through the Explorers, and over it drives around Miller. Miller looked a little tired there as Dougie just went right past him. Well, what Doug's doing is using the basketball, and he's so good cool with the basketball, he's moving it like he's going to go left. He just brings it back and goes to the right and lays it in. He's got 21, and the lead is still at 9. High screen either side of the foul line for Walker, who's in the ball game. Woodard's got a 3 over her. Strong. Good execution. What Greg Wooder is using screens extremely well. Rubbing Jack Hurd off just for that instant to get the three down. 25 points brings the crowd back. 81-75. Dougie with the left. Takes it to Miller. Miller fouls him. Looked like a clean block at the top. You can't play much better defense than that. You're taught to take away the baseline. He got his feet down there. Watch Lance Miller use his feet to take the baseline. Doug is in, oh, that's a good block. That's perfect. I mean, you can't play defense any better than that. That's a no-call way here. Overton did, he puts his body in there. You, there's nothing at all. I mean, that's perfect defense by Lance Miller. We will have Overton on the line. But Miller's, it doesn't matter, does it? No, and Lance has four fouls now. There's Dougie, among the top 10 scorers in America. I think you can make a real good argument that this backcourt duel of Woods and Overton is right up there in the country with anybody. Especially when you throw in Jack Hurd. Nice trio. There's a little half-court yeah. pressure by LaSalle, different look. 
thrown by Speedy Mars and his staff. One, two, two, almost a turnover as the diving levers blocked from the rear on Woodard by Hurd. That was a foul on Hurd that they got away with. And Rolly just has his hands up to his temples, can't believe it. But I heard really came over the back. There's Levers dives and misses, but right over the top there. And they said, oh, got all ball. Yeah. They pack it back in again. It's Here's a zone defense, maybe a box and one. See if Woodard goes through with her. No, he doesn't. So great it's zone. Great you got to be worried where Woodard is at all times. You better get up on him. And President is. Miller. Walker and Woodard play the zone offense perimeter. Woodard can penetrate for a two-pointer. Short. President, the one-arm one paper hanger rebound. Good movement by President to get back. He was out of position, but got back quickly to grab a strong rebound. Again, LaSalle sets the stack. Screen, and Woods pops off it with Walker. Walker strips him. Diving President, but he's laying on the line. Good call. Broderick's right elbow across the line, right down in front of us. Great that hustle. Sloppy ball handling by Randy Woods. He's got to control the basketball. Good move by Chris Walker. Just to step in there, he loses the handle, and you'll see President run, but there's the arm on the out of bounds. Again, the zone up. And a screen for Walker. Finds Miller. Yes, and a foul. Foul on Broderick, President. Lance Miller was taking a chance. Remember, he has four fouls here, but he drives real under control. There's the reach in right away by President's a foul. President's got to keep those arms straight up in the air. Great job splitting the zone. And when you play zone and have to get out on shooters, it should leave room for penetration. Right, the good penetration that the last time we saw Villanova, or when they played Temple, they made the penetration but lost the basketball a lot of times. Tonight they're making nice penetration. Let's see if Speedy Mars goes back to the man-to-man -man defense, because right now they're getting good shots against the zone. What do you think, he's just teasing them? Well, they may the be zone? a little tired too, and, and, and he's maybe worried about a little foul trouble. Got Bron Holland back on the floor, replacing Broderick President, who now has four personal fouls, as does the shooter, Lance Miller. Trap on Overton, foul on David Miller. Ron Holland will walk the length of the floor for two shots. But you see, you have two teams arched, obviously very good basketball teams right now. They're doing a good job, and when you play one defense over and over, the other team will get a hold of it, and they'll get in their continuity. So what Speedy Morris right there is directing Milko Levers, he went into a different defense to show him a new look. Here's Milko, it's Ron Holland on the free throw line. And he's got 10. Two shots is a lot different. I mean, you go to the line knowing you're going to get another one, even if you miss it, your confidence level has to be extremely strong there. And interesting that everybody went for a rebound anyway, as the players still learning the rule. That rule is going to go by the wayside. You think so? Yes. Write it down. Seven-point basketball game. We approach four minutes. Bird faces up. Has Bain 16 feet away. Seems Aaron Baines always answers the bell for Villanova offensively. He's done it in a lot of games where he's getting ready for him. He's got 12. And an official's timeout at the 3.55 mark. Villanova trying to mount a run. They're down by five on their own floor inside four minutes at DuPont. I spent my lifetime thieving with my father, and now I'm going to thieve with my son. The two of you, crazy? What a day this has been. It's not safe to be a thief. Who the hell put it in your head that being safe is what life is all about? Too young to play it safe. And me too! Along with those strong genes, my father passes on a lot of other crap to go with it. So you stay away from him, all right? High stakes, low risk, nonviolent. Jimmy Choo pays us an even million. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. You are not listening to me! Listen to me! You don't listen to what I freaking mean! What the hell is wrong with your family? What's wrong with my family is my lunatic father. This is why I hated putting on your 
a snow shovel again. There's nothing like a good robbery to bring a family together. Welcome home, Vito. Talking about how to break pressure, Eddie. Yeah, right now, breaking the pressure, and then when they get the ball, what you're going to do offensively. But also, I think he may be talking about that zone defense. He can't be happy because they're getting real nice shots against his defense. Including the uh, penetration to Bird, who found Aaron, Aaron Bain, who, as you say, really steps up in front of Oh, he does. He moves right in there. He sees that Bron Holland's left him, steps up, just keeps his head square to the basket, keeps the ball through there, and knocks it down. Here's Rowley and Speedy. There's 165 points on the board with four minutes left. Remember Villanova's old keep them to 70 and we're automatic? That has been thrown out the window. Overton steps between. Walker and Bain has Holland. Good job breaking pressure to Overton. They'll go in the corner. That's a problem right here. Someone's got to come to him. Dougie with the cut. Hangs it on the rim. Walker with Wood. Woodard's alone. Money. See, you made a decision where you, if you leave Woodard alone to try to help defensively, you're going to get murdered. Speedy Moore's going to need another timeout. See, Jack Hurd has lost his man, and his man is Greg Woodard. Do not lose Greg Woodard when he's behind the three-point mark, because he'll bury you. Look at his stroke, perfect, the elbow right in there, and the follow-through. See, the LaSalle staff is very upset with the last move that Overton backdoored. They said he got pushed from behind. So Speedy Morris took the timeout to try to take the crowd away, and I think to work the officials a little bit. It is now a 28-point evening for Greg Woodard. It's a two-point basketball game with 324 remaining. See, when you're on an away floor like this with 324 and you're only up two, every possession's huge because you know Villanova's defense is going to be all over you. In the second half, LaSalle's done a real nice job because Woods, when he catches the basketball, or Doug Overton, is not letting the double team even get there, are too quick and they're penetrating away. They have to learn to still attack the basket. They, there's so much time on the clock with 324 that they have to try to score. If they try to just take care of the basketball and run the clock down, Villanova will blow by them. And let's credit Chris Walker, who's had a quiet day after some oral surgery. He's out there at crunch time, and he's leading them back. Hasn't scored, but he's settling the floor. And directly in front of us, Jack Hurd looks over a four-man stack and a two-point lead to Doug Overton. You can't see it on TV, but their uniforms are soaked, and I mean soaked, both teams. Through and through. The LaSalle Blues a couple shades darker. Jack Hurd for three! Well, I don't know if Speedy was time for him in that, but there's Woodard on the one end. You cannot let Jack Hurd have that shot. You've got to let him drive to the basket. Make him drive. No, no, no. Walker wipes off around a main screen. Woodard gets caught in the air. Lucky to find Dell. Walker to the foul line. He gets caught in the air. Bodies fly in four hands, Woods and Dowdell, and Woods climbs up on top as he always does. He doesn't want to be underneath anybody, he always finds a way to get on top. There you go, Woods goes for the steal twice, can't get it, but good hands by Milko Levers, and they're going for the basketball. They know this is a victory right here, any team that gets the possession. And Randy always finds a way to like just roll himself up on top. But what he did is he pulled up Mark Dowdell, so they're playing rough, but they're playing clean. And he now changes the possession arrow. Villanova will keep possession. The next one will belong to the South, which has a five-point lead. Woodard a high screen for Walker to Bain. See what happened there? They're splitting on the screens, but you've got to know where Woodard is. You've got to stay with him. It's Randy Woods trying to match him. He'll switch on the screen. They just the yeah, you see Overton's now going to step up on him. Lance Miller, why not? That's why. Doug Overton, the long rebound. At the 2.24 mark, the sell up five with the ball. Randy Woods has a wet spot. And they're going to stop play. I don't know if that was a good move by Randy Woods, to be honest with you. 
because what will happen now is they have to inbound the basketball. Tough to inbound the basketball, especially if Villanova puts a lot of pressure on it. And they have two seconds to cross the timeline. I don't know if they realize that. They better not throw it back court. They throw it back court. They got two seconds. Better throw it in front court. Again, the four. They got to throw it in the front court. If they don't, they're going to have problems right right now. Let's see what happens. Nope. One. And they're giving them a fresh ten. I don't know. Yeah, I guess they get a fresh ten because of the wet spot. Hey, you don't see wet spots that often. Looking for a five-second count. Woods trapped. Has two men alone underneath. Heard. Air balls at two. Out of bounds off Levers. Jack Heard rushed that one. Inside two minutes. Five-point lead. Walker around the Dowdell screen. Heard with Woodard. Bain is posted. Wants it. Has it. Looks over Bron Holland, fouled by Bron Holland. And that's a little bit of a mismatch out there because Bron Holland would prefer to play the post player than an Aaron Bain 15 feet from the basket. Aaron Bain has the advantage there. And this will be two shots for Bain. He's in double figures with 12. Villanova to within three. As the first. Substitution, David Miller, offense defense with Chris Walker. Randy Woods may have liked that because Chris Walker has been putting a lot of pressure on Randy Woods. Looking at that basketball. Doug Overton waves Jack Hurd back into the backcourt to set up against what he knows will be trapping pressure if Bain makes, as he does. And it's Lloyd Mumford that comes in for Aaron Bain. So this is the trapping team. Overton releases. They won't throw the long pass. It's Holland in trouble. Hurd has a three-on-one. Goes to Randy Woods. Oh, Ball fake. Wow. Lovely, lovely, lovely Randy Woods. Terrific play by Randy Woods. I mean, he just showed the basketball. Great hands and, and awareness. He's got 24. Mumford off the bench. An ill-advised three. Two-on-one. Jack Hurd. Hammer time. Well, we need the timeout. Two big possessions by LaSalle. They have a seven-point lead with a minute 14. Timeout, Massimino. There's a good play by Brian Holland to throw it over the defense. Villanova has all the plays. Look at this, to show the ball. David Miller just went for the ball. I mean, Woods just shows it to him. And there's the nice lob pass over to defender Mumford. And here's the jam by Jack Hurd. Whoa. Oh, South plays smart basketball, don't they, down the stretch well, here? what you have to do when Villanova is defending like that and denying you in a half-court situation and overplaying you, you have to take the base, the baseball pass over to the defender and run under it, as we saw Jackie Hurd do it. You can't make the bounce pass or any other kind of pass because they're all in front of you in the backcourt. Let's get into speedy, hold on. Plenty of time, plenty of time, a minute 13, down seven. Rowley Massimino gets a timeout, he'll come with a set play right out. He could go for the two, he doesn't need the three-point opportunity right away. So let's see what he ha happens. They know Woodard will be in the lineup, but Sal's got to be aware of where Greg Woodard is. And Rowley is a master at the end game. Is it his own? His own defense. Woodard for three! I can't believe it. I can't believe that they would let him get the three-point opportunity. And a foul on the other end on the inbounds. I know at timeout, Speedy Moore said, we go to zone, where is Greg Woodard? Get up, make him put the ball on the floor. Jack Hurd rested for one second, and forget it, it's over. 
Watch Woodard over there. There's the screen by Bain. Hurd's got to get out quicker, and Woodard just nails it. That is a deep, deep three for Woodard. Do we have 31? 31. <laughs> 31. 31 points. And Lance Miller has fouled out. Great effort by Lance Miller. I have him for 21 points. and played a terrific floor game. Ran some point, played some two, little small forward, took it down to the paint. See now here, again, I'm harping on this, but I hate it. You get two shots, you don't get the one-on-one. -on -one. They're down four going over. With Randy, don't matter too much. Well, yeah, he does have ice water. There's no blood in those veins, it's just ice water. 99, 93, 88, 61 seconds remaining. Woods with 25, 26. He's got 21 second half points, and the points only tell a fraction of the story about Randy Woods. And the man, they pick him up. Winter drives baseline. Hurd lays down, no call. Timeout, Villanova, they don't get it. Rowley wanted the timeout, didn't get it. Foul, Walker on Overton. See what Villanova has to do, and it's tough because you're scrambling right now, but they're only down 4 or 49. You don't want to foul Overton or Woods. You know, if they could get the ball in the Milker Leavers or Brian Holland, foul them right away. I don't think you want to put these two kids on the line because they're real, very good at when the game means something. What do we have? Overton shooting 84% from the three throw line, and Randy Woods has only been in the cut only two for three. He's only had three chances in the, before the game. But he's been terrific from the line. Just one timeout remaining for both clubs. Both are in the two-shot area, and the arrow favors the explorers, as does the score. Yeah, wrong kid to foul here. Somehow they got to try to get the ball in the hands over play. Overton and Woods make the other guys catch the basketball and then foul them immediately. Doug is seven for seven from the line. He's eight for eight. He's automatic. It's 96-90 at 49 seconds. Clock running on Chris Walker. Gets a high screen, Dowdell. Dowdell steps off it as Liebers comes out on him. Penetration, kick ball by Birdie, just kick the ball. And Woodard has to foul Overton at 36 seconds. See, right there, LaSalle did a good job by bringing the zone out for the three-point opportunities. Calvin Berger not worried about the three-pointer. He did not want to take it, tried to drive, just went right off his foot, turnover. And uh, we've got some... Uh, Season ticket holders heading for the exits at 36 seconds, which may be quite premature. Yeah, it's ridiculous. They're not the students, they're the people in the good seats. That's nine for nine. Doug Overton and Randy Woods have been just sparkling in the second half. Point ball game at 36 seconds. Walker will think about his own three. He's got room. Misses. Ron Holland skies to the board. And will be back on the foul line. And Speedy Morris high five and his son. A hug for Keith. Down the line to Broderick President, the rest of his club. And Rowley, of course, despondent, will lose his second Big Five game of the season. A 13-point loss to Villanova, uh, to Temple at 70-57. And LaSalle is about to hit the century mark. Around and out. At least three possessions minimum. Woodard stripped by Jack Hurd. Randy Woods. People we'll want to know easy. who would step up Lionel Simmons. Would they have problems? This is a real gut check and confidence win to come into DuPont to beat Villanova. I think it's going to give the Explorers a lot of confidence. And Randy Woods just marches to the foul line. Great performance, Doug Overton. A day after losing his grandma. Yeah, we did, Dougie. I sure did. He said that Dougie just came over and said this one was dedicated to his grandmother, Bessie. He said, my grandma did it for us. Very touching. And he's a terrific kid. They don't come any better than Doug Overton. Woods makes a couple of more. And now they're over 100. 
First time Villanova's given up 100 since November of 88. Walker has it slip out of his hands. Bain will get a left hand layup in the closing seconds and a timeout. This is the fourth time LaSalle has been over 100 against Villanova. There's only been 16 games that Rolly Massimino coach teams have given up 100 points, including today, and four of them belong to LaSalle. And their guards have been unbelievable. Heard is fouled by Woodard. You talk about, you know, the big five and the problems and will they continue to play with the schedule? And that's the problem because this game is huge game with LaSalle because you talk about going into the MAC. You know, their outside schedule, LaSalle has to make them rough games because the NCAA are going to look at the schedule. And a win over Villanova at DuPont is huge for LaSalle going in. Then on the other hand, Rolly Massimino has to have LaSalle, Penn, St. Joe, and Temple coming in trying to knock their heads off every time come in. And then he's got his Big E schedule trying to knock their heads off. So to Remy the whole thing, let everybody in the NCAA tournament <laughs> take one more weekend. Well, LaSalle will play Loyola and then Temple before the big, before the max schedule. And they win it at DuPont Pavilion. The fourth consecutive win for Speedy over Rowley at DuPont in a scorcher of a basketball game. That LaSalle won down the stretch by a final score of 102 to 94. A tremendous performance by the backcourt of LaSalle. And we'll come back and wrap it up at DuPont in just a moment. The American movie family, loving, caring, supportive, and ready for your viewing pleasure this month on PRISM. You never asked me if I wanted to be here, did you? I don't! Nick Mancuso is a rock star forced to raise a son he never knew in Blame It on the Night. Single mom Kirstie Alley searches for the perfect father, but baby Mikey already has his mind made up. John Travolta is the daddy of choice in the hit comedy, Look Who's Talking. I want you to kidnap me and get the ransom. Are you in therapy or something? A rich kid wants a little attention from his busy parents, so he decides to stage his own kidnapping. Peter Billingsley, Burt Young, and Martin Sheen star in the comedy, Beverly Hills Brats. Talking about a lot of money, Pop, and it's not even dangerous. No, no, no. If it's against the law, it's dangerous. No, no, this is a war and three generations of thieves plot the biggest heist in family history when Dustin Hoffman, Sean Connery, and Matthew Broderick star in Family Business. <laughs> now then, lucky lads, let's catch up on a little family business. Hmm? Yeah, nothing like a good robbery to bring a family close. It's a look at four unusual families in four very different films this month on PRISM, the channel with a better variety of movies. You want to watch 32 Flyers games, where do you look? You want to watch 40 76ers games, where do you look? You want to watch 40 Phillies games, where do you look? You want to watch all home games, where do you look? Prism, that's where. You can look all around the dial, but you won't find our games anywhere else. And you won't find another channel where all the games are home games. The home team advantage belongs to Prism. And if you love the home teams, you'll love Prism. Brighten your family's holiday season with three delightful Yuletide specials this December on PRISM. An Eskimo boy goes on a magical journey to discover the true meaning of Christmas into Kiki and his search for a Merry Christmas. A young Nicole Kidman pursues two bumbling horse thieves who have stolen her family's prize racehorse in the holiday adventure Bush Christmas. And finally, follow the long and winding trail that leads a young animal to the first Christmas in the animated story of The Little Brown Burrow. Three heartwarming specials, all with a touch of holiday spirit. This month on PRISM, your channel for great family entertainment. Well, one of the best backcourt combinations in America combined for 55 points and a huge win. We'll go to Ed Stefanski with the coach and the backcourt, Eddie. Well, we have a real happy Speedy Mars. Speedy, you've never lost here. Is this home court for you? No, I don't even like this place. I really don't. Uh, you know, we've been fortunate. The kids win a game. I, I don't have anything to do with it. I, I'm just proud of these guys to come back against a very good Villanova team. And, and you know, what else can you say about Rowley that hasn't already been said? He's, he's done it all. For us to come back six points down here with our hostile fans, who well, I do like them. 
uh, I mean, it says a lot about the character of these young people. At halftime, you're a little upset and you predicted a, a win in the second half. Who do you like tomorrow in the Eagles game? Well, Eddie, I, I'm not a prognosticator, but I really feel, and I mean this, I really feel we can play with Villanova, and I think that our kids are better than them. I really do. And we're only down at six at halftime. I thought that both these guys were not playing up to their potential. And, and I told you at halftime I was going to go in. There's, there's a couple people I want to talk to. Well, I talked to them, and they came out the second half and just played the way they can. Uh, and we beat, we beat a very good team. I think Villanova's a very good team. I just say we're better. Let me talk about a young man who's getting better and better, and Randy you didn't get to play in the first six games, but you came out and your offense doesn't seem like you're slowing down at all. Well, I came back, you know, I practiced every day with the team. You know, at first I thought I wasn't going to feel in sync with them, but, event, you know, uh, if I start rolling. When I played his first half, second half, we came out and played like we know how to play. And got up on the defense, got some skills, and executed our play, some big shots from contributors off the bench, and we came out with the win. Randy, who taught you that move? Even Miller's pants are still going the opposite way. Well, yeah, I learned it from Pooh. Um, I seen him anticipating the pass, so I just faked it and laid it up. Uh, luckily, it worked, because if it didn't, I'd have been on the bench. <laughs> now, we also had Doug Overton, the other tandem in this garden. Doug, we said that your grandma passed away yesterday, and uh, I'm sure this game had a special meaning. Oh, yeah, this had definitely had a meaning for, uh, for me. And, you know, some bad things off the court have been happening with me, a couple deaths in the family. But, uh, you know, it, it builds character, and it, and it builds... Uh, enthusiasm in the guys and, and we came out ready to play and it was it meant a lot for me to get this win for my grandma well Doug now with Randy back in the lineup though he's getting some shots off I mean are you gonna share those, that basketball with him oh, you can see that tonight I mean you know I don't have to bring the ball up 40 minutes Randy can handle the ball he can take some of the shots you know I don't mind you know scoring 30 points is nice but when you're getting those W's and you know Randy's doing the job and we're winning that's all that counts Let's have one more comment from Speedy. How good is this backcourt compared to other people in the country? Well, you know, I, I don't like to compare backcourts. I, I just tell you, Eddie, I wouldn't trade them for any backcourt in the country. Not only they're, they're good kids, and, you know, they're, they're, they're playing real well together, and, uh, you know, they like their teammates. It's, it's a team that really likes each other, and, you know, they'll be the first to tell you that they got a lot of support out. Jack Kerr just played another excellent second half, and, again, Jeff Neubauer got in there and gave us a couple minutes and, and had a beautiful assist, and, and that's one of the good things that came out of Randy's suspension. So, uh, you know, we, we, we had some negatives, but the positives are now starting to outweigh them. But these are the guys, these are the reason why we are winning, and, and we're really proud of them. Well, great victory, and enjoy your Christmas, fellas. Thank you. Okay, that's Speedy Morris and his good backcourt, and I just want to wish Larry and everyone great holidays and all the prison fans. We had a classic this afternoon. Yeah, we certainly did as the fancy. Great job with the backcourt and with the coach. And obviously, Speedy still gets quite fired up to face Roly Massimino. His club put 66 points on the board in the second half against Roly Massimino. They got the fourth time LaSalle's gone over 100 points out of only 16 times it's been done to Roly. And they were not quite chucking and ducking the way Roly might have hoped they would with the offensive end. LaSalle runs away and hides down the stretch with a final score of 102 to 94. We'll look at the leading scorers for you. Of course, the backcourt of LaSalle, as you might expect, put a lot of points on the board. Unofficially, Doug Overton with 28, with 27, Randy Woods with 28, and Jack Hurd at 18. So the three-guard tandem combines for 73 points. Bron Holland with some real good minutes. He had 12. Meantime, on the other side for Villanova, they were able to spread it early on. They went to nine players deep. You thought fatigue might be a problem for Villanova, but it was not a, a, the problem for LaSalle whatsoever. They stayed to their seven, eight-man rotation, got some limited minutes out of Newbauer and out of Shelton, and down the stretch, it was the LaSalle Explorers that were fresher despite 33 points from Greg Woodard, 21 from Lance Miller, 16 Aaron Bain, 8 Mark Dell. Anthony Pell, the freshman, had a great closing moments of the first half, but was really not much of a factor, half number two, and the freshman Mumford with six as well. So that completes our end of the basketball triple header for you here on PRISM. Villanova, the men, the women, win 51-48 over the women of LaSalle in our first game. In the second game, the LaSalle men defeat the Villanova Wildcats, the second Big Five loss for Villanova. The final score, 102-94. It's about 90 degrees in here. The people are clearing out into the... the early winner's eve on this the shortest day of the year and we'll set you up for 76ers basketball coming up with mark zumov jack ramsey and jim barnack live from the spectrum that'll come your way at about 7 30 so on behalf of john slobotkin our producer bob Ayers, our director the entire technical crew and both uh, lasalle university and villanova university and ed stefanski i'm larry rosen saying merry christmas happy holiday glad you hung with us for a great basketball game and good night everybody